with my grandfather's father, Charles and Ella are the ones that started, that bought the park. But this was in the family, because I can remember there used to be um, a gas station and store up on that hill, in the clearing up there on that hill. Um, and my grandma and grandpa lived up there. And um, we used to go there and watch The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> All of us grandkids would go and watch The Wizard of Oz and, and stuff. So, yeah, so I remember when there used to be a store up there on the hill. That used to be the hotel. Yep, yep, that actually used to be a hotel. And I lived there for a while when I was, I think my mom said I was about one or two, something like that. We lived there for a while. But then they had, like, cottages. They had, like, little cottages. Mom said they had cottages, like, by the river. And then they, I remember them being built, like, on the hillside here. And that, and they used to rent those out. When they were when they were young, the three girls, my mom and her two sisters, helped run the place. But the three girls worked down here to make help make this what it was. Anyway, my grandpa got sick in 1964. He and then they sold it to Hoffner's, and then Hoffner's continued with it. See, when I worked here, this was over there. This building, this building wasn't even here when I worked here. Um, there was a small building, like even smaller than this, probably half the size of this, and it was called the Yum Yum Shop. And we did snow cones and cotton candy and all that stuff. So yes, yeah, so I don't even know what they used this for. Um, my mom was saying that was the dance hall originally, and for years it was the dance hall. But then the dancing thing went out, so they made a roller skating rink of it up there. Oh my gosh, wow, wow, that's sad. When there was a dance hall upstairs, my grandpa used to hire bands for all weekend for the dance hall. And way back when, he hired a band, a black band. And my mom said she was a little girl, and they lived at the hotel at the time. And she can remember the KKK came and burnt a huge cross in their yard. She was scared to death. <laughs> all the big companies would have their picnics and stuff and we'd have we'd make all the food grandma well when the Hoffners owned it grandma Hoffner would make and the girls would make all the food and then we'd have like a hot buffet thing out here and then the companies would come help themselves and stuff and their kids could ride the rides and actually I didn't work here until Hoffners owned it so yeah it was something else I can't believe all these trees that are back here this is just blowing me away these are my personal memories here of the park when I was a child. Once when I was very small, and small enough that I was sitting with my big cousin here. This was probably in 79, if I had to guess. I was probably three. I was always the thrill seeker kid and I wanted to ride the big stuff. Uh, I did get to ride the roller coaster and I did get to ride some of the big kid stuff like the, um, the octopus was one of my big favorites. And they would always stick me in the middle and I would get my hands pinched on the, the, um, the handlebars where they would come together. One of the rides that I wanted and the worst way to ride and I never could was the looper. It was a big hamster wheel thing. My cousins were always big enough to ride and I never could and I remember sitting and watching them going, man that looks like fun. And I never could, and I remember the year that I was finally big enough to ride it, we got to the Bombers Park, and it was gone. This is actually in this picture here. Her name is Carolyn Hoffner. She's a young baby in this picture. I was terribly sad to see it go. The year that it closed, we tried to take our girls there. It was 2001, the year that it closed for the last time. We rolled up there um, the very last day that it closed. Uh, it was the day that they closed it down, and um, Mr. Hoffner was stretching the chain across the, the driveway. He says, I'm sorry, I'm closed for the season. Yeah, but that's okay, you know, we'll try next year. And he says, well, I'm sorry, this is, there won't be a next year. So we missed out on an opportunity to uh, give our kids one last chance to, you know, give them the memories that we had. And that's just too bad, but, and I understand that Mr. Hoffner died a short time later. The property, I bought it about three years ago, October 2013. I just finished building the house. We moved in about a year ago. And they split all of this land up about 10 years ago when they, well, they shut down in 2001 and they auctioned it, a lot of the land off. So all of this belonged to the Vollmers family. Well, the Hoffners who bought it after them. So see that fence line? Yeah. That's my property line there. And that's of course is the old hotel. Now, 
I crossed the creek too. We own half an acre on where the uh, amusement park was, where the rides were. In our yard, there were some rides here, I'm told. And uh, there was also, um, oh yeah, that giant water slide in the 30s was on the property here. I didn't know what it was when we bought it. I had no idea that it was an oh, amusement yeah, park. Now the bridge here, as you can see, this is not very good shape. This is really rough. I've got it strapped on the other side. It's the only thing holding it together. I think I need to build a more functional bridge. Maybe uh, one that I can fish off of. That would be exciting. In the summer, this is a spectacular place to be. Uh, a couple of the commercials that were shot were shot like right here and people picnicking in this area here. Well, you can of course see the dance hall from here. So the, the roof has collapsed uh, all completely in the last two years. I just thought it was a beautiful piece of land, quite honestly. Uh, nonetheless, I do enjoy a lot of the stories that I get. A lot of people tell me about their time when they, actually their, their first kiss on our bridge here. <laughs> One gentleman, uh, an elderly uh, gentleman from the community here, told me that his father courted his mother here. <laughs> I thought that was a neat thing. So we had water up to here last June and uh, water from the park, I mean, it just, it flows right across from the park. The most exciting thing as of late has been a fox that hangs out and the cops come out here quite a bit to check on the place. Oops. I know a lot of people, this is quite depressing when they see this. That'd be a neat sign to have, wouldn't it? You can see the roof collapse from here on that guy. I don't know. I'm, it looks like a concession stand of sorts. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Old ice maker. That used to have bumper cars or something on there. I, there's a lot of pictures of people, like all the staff sitting on this seat right here. This. This uh, was like the morning start out place. Uh, from the other side, it had a big lookout over the river. Well, those are some fresh Bud Light cans there. I, I mean, I at least get the request once a week. People say, hey, you're the new guy that owns this. So I heard you're thinking about opening it. I mean, I can only imagine in the heyday, this had to have been something else. Cool little miniature park down on the river, yeah. opened up originally in 1895 here. Yeah, that's what I saw too. That's just cool. When we first moved in, none of this was collapsed. So this is all new within like the last, uh, in the last years when it's really gotten bad. And the wall on the outside holding up the other side has collapsed out towards the river. Um, this roller coaster is still in operation today in a park not too far from here, as a matter of fact. And, um, New Philadelphia, Ohio. Anybody can ride it for 75 cents. And they still use the same cars. So it's very cool. They call it the Little Dipper. And our little roller coaster, our Bombers Park roller coaster, is still up and running to this very day and still alive and well. So that kind of makes my heart happy and that's cool. It's a part of my history that I know will soon eventually just disappear and someday be gone. Well, you know, my kids' generation will not know what Walmers Park was. Walmers Park will someday be a thing of the past. It's rotting away. There's not much left. I remember they had these, <laughs> those funny mirrors like what they do at the carnivals or at the fair that make you look skinny and tall or fat and short. And those probably were from, from when my grandma and grandpa owned this place. There was some good times down here working for some of us called him Uncle Joe and some of us called him Big Wally because <laughs> he had a big, big old mustache. But yeah, it was, it was a fun time working down here. It really, really was. Wow. After Joe and Frida bought it, people had wedding receptions up here and they'd get married here and then have the reception. A couple people I graduated with, I had gotten invitations to go to their wedding and their, they had their reception up here, but I didn't go. Wow. Yeah, oh my God, wow, wow. My mom said when grandpa and them first started this, there, were, there was a building that were toilets over this way. And then she said in between 
the building with the toilets in the main building, she said there was concrete. And then, you know, like I told you, there was that big concrete wall, but there were big, huge cement steps going down the hill. And they had the road, that's where they had all the rowboats parked that they used to rent. The thing I would do is clean it up and uh, turn it into kind of a summer camp thing to work with, uh, do some stuff with kids from the city that don't get to do stuff very often. I was fishing with some buddies up at Weir's and they took me through the cut through over here. They saw a couple of kids get out on a canoe in the corner that were fishing. And I just thought, man, that'd be neat to live there someday. <laughs> and it wasn't until after we bought this that I realized that this was the actual same spot that I was pointing at and that was really cool.